No, no. No, I'm not, I'm not going to say it retrorical. No, I'm sorry, but people, you know, they're fed up of hearing about it. Uh, on most people's videos lately, they're just mentioning it all the time. Carry on. <laughs> well, I suppose it. If you insist, we can just say it once, can't we, retrorical? Are you ready? Dizzy! Welcome to the fantasy zone. Get ready. Welcome everybody, it's the final pickups video for Retro Games Revive for a while. Yeah, as you can understand, and I apologise David Retro Games played badly, it was Retro Raccoon's idea to say that. So it's 7 in the morning, I've got a bit of natural light coming in, and yeah, I thought I'd get this done early, nice and early. Now normally on on some, some of you guys, you like to have a beer, uh, on your videos, you know, especially uh, Planet Retro, big game Al, he likes a nice beer and I can appreciate that Al, uh, Eddie, Tootie, Dainster, they all like to have a beer while they're doing the videos and you know what, 7 o'clock in the morning, there's no rules at minute inside your house is there, so I've got one myself. So what have I got? Well, this is a Mud Stout. A Mud City Stout and it's got it's chocolate and vanilla stout so it's, I'm hoping it's got some nice vanilla tones uh, and chocolate hints. It's a Saddler's and never tried this before. It's quite a it's quite an hefty one at 6% but well, let's, let's have a pour, let's see what it's like. I do like uh, stouts particularly love uh, Guinness and Murphy's. That's, that's nice that I'll just do a little bit of a close up for you. Nice little froth on top. It's a nice uh, dark colour as you would expect. Saddler's Mud City Stout. Oh, let's have a try. Smells nice enough. Yeah, that's lovely that, it is nice. Whether I should be drinking it at seven o'clock in the morning, <laughs> well, who cares at this moment in time. Anyway, let's get onto the, onto the pickups. Now, there is an accumulation of a couple of weeks worth here. There isn't a great deal because obviously, uh, as things progressed with this thing, um, you know, slowed down for the couriers might stop um, delivering and I thought there's no point. Um, the last pickup I did actually was um, a recommendation of Eddie Roller Car and I'll show you that soon. I'm going to start off with this. Now actually I was cleaning my drawer out of the computer desk and I came across this and I can't remember if I actually mentioned it in another video but I'm gonna I'm gonna show you it again anyway if I've already shown you I'm gonna show you it again. It's a badge for me for my badge collection. It's a bit small to show you on the camera, so I'll do a I'll do a little clip video clip of it. And yeah, it's just an old 8-bit style joystick. And I can't remember, I can't actually remember the name of those joysticks that's pictured. No, it's gone. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, that's what it is, it's an old 8-bit, 16-bit uh, style joystick and that'll go onto me, onto me badge board. Anyway, that's that. So next, I, <laughs> I don't know why I picked this up. I love the shoot up construction kit for the Commodore 64 and I have already got it. It was the, the Commodore 64 that I've got, the box Commodore 64, part of the pack was um, Typing Tutor, uh, Shook, Shook Construction Kit and some others 
and they all came as a bundle. They weren't in the original boxes, they were in these uh, design boxes for this certain pack. Um, and I, I have had a go of it. Uh, when I first got the Commodore, I had a, had a little go of it. And actually, I was going to try and create games, try and do some, you know, decent looking games on it, if that's possible. Um, and I was looking for the original version on the Commodore 64. I noticed they were quite pricey. Uh, some of them were the disc version. I haven't got a disc drive. Uh, and I actually came across this. Which is the shoot 'em up construction kit for the Amiga. And yeah, I mean the, the Amiga version is as limited as the Commodore 64. Obviously, graphics a little, little bit more colourful, the sprites, you know. I think on uh, the Commodore the were the were the 8x8 pixels. Um these are a lot more detailed, can't, can't quite remember. But yeah, I mean, it uses the same engine, uses the same interface, uh, just with better colours. And uh, the sounds, again, they're very, they're very souk like But yeah, I, I saw it on the Amiga. It weren't that expensive. It might have been about six or seven pounds, if I remember correctly. For a while since I got this. Uh, just haven't done a pickles video to feature it. Uh, by Outlaw, which is just like it's basically the other name for sensible software, and was published by Power Software. So, yeah, that's Shoot 'em Up Construction Kit. Like I said, the, the, the games are very limited, and um, they have uh, pre installed sound. You can't you can alter the sounds a little bit, but they basically all sound the same. But, you know, it's a, it's a little bit of fun. I mean, as serious as I, I was going to take it, I even bought a pad of graph paper uh, to draw in the sprites. And a funny story, I once, did, I once actually made a game, Blaster Balls. <laughs> Blaster Balls. And I believe, I've convinced myself that it was that good, I could send it into alternative software in Pontefract uh, to get it published. Um, not a chance. <laughs> it, looking back now, I think I really wasn't that good. Um, but at the time, you know, it, it was a lot of fun. And yeah, that was my one and only hope at getting into the, uh, the software industry. I've done really well with Commodore 64 games. Now, Hit Squad, I did really well. And the last pickups. This month, I'm not done so good. I've only got the one. And it's quite a, a generic title, quite a popular title, and it's Daily Thompson's Olympic Challenge. I have the other one, I think it's Daily Thompson's Decathlon. This is Daily Thompson's Challenge. All, all new set of um, events to, to partake in, uh, even some training sessions, weightlifting and all that. Yeah, uh, the graphics are probably slightly better as well. A little bit of an improvement on, on Decathlon. So that is Heat Squad and that is Sports 13, number 13. So another one to add to the Heat Squad collection. So Firebird, well, again, I'm getting them in dribs and drabs. Again, I, I, for some reason, I've picked up on games where I thought I'd gone. And when I've checked my me, uh, me list, and even gone to my lock up and looked for, well, I'm sure they had that, and I didn't. And yeah, I, I had seen this a couple of times on eBay, and obviously when I realised I didn't have it, I snapped, I snapped it up. And it's Zenji. It's a puzzle game. It actually got a Zap Sizzler. Zap Sizzler is from the magazine Zap64. Obviously, they used to rate, review and rate games. And the Sizzler, I believe, were over 90% overall. So, yeah, it's for a budget game. It did really well back in back in its day. I've never actually played it, so I don't know myself uh, how good it is. But Zap gave it a Sizzler, so it, it must be fairly decent. 
but that's Zenji on Firebird uh, Silver 199 range, Silver Bird. Now one particular collection I have been doing well with on the Commodore 64 is the Americana label. Americana is a budget label from the Commodore 64. These were priced at 2 99 Now the Americana games, the label, the games within the label are selling pretty decently at the moment as in the sellers can get a, can get a bit for them. All these games were roughly £10 and over. In fact, I got a I got an absolute blitz of notifications on the eBay for Americana games. And there must have been about 10 games come up. I think they were all from the same seller, so whether they were a collector or it just you know we just happened to have all these games, but there were a load. Some of them were going for 30, 35 pound and at this moment in time I'm not ready to spend that amount yet. £10 is still a considerable amount to pay for a, for a Commodore 64 game. Um, but that is about the region um, that I'm having to pay at the moment for these Americana games. And some of these games that were coming up you know, I imagine to be relatively uh, hard to find, quite rare, because they're the first time I've seen them come up. Whether they'll come up again for a long time, I don't know. I, anyway, I'll start off with this one. And um, this, is, this is a well-known game, it's Karate Champ. It's obviously, it's like uh, International Karate and Way of the Exploding Fist kind of game. It's a it's a one-on-one -on -one, uh, karate game, uh, but this one you have to you have to fight a, a running bull charging at you, and yeah, things like that, uh, other objects and what have you. It is, I'm sure it's a well-known game, Karate Champ, because I think uh, I think these uh, these Americana label games they're obviously re-releases. I'm pretty sure of it. Well, I know some of them are for definite. Correct, I am. Yeah, I'm positive it is. By data, the, the, the original game will by data release, so it, it is an arcade conversion. Yeah, that's Karate Champ on Americana label. And like I said, I did well with Americana. I've got a couple of these games. Next, we've got Space Shuttle Simulator. As commander of an advanced space shuttle craft, your only aim is to be chosen to mastermind the ultimate mission to launch a sophisticated probe into the tail of Haley's Comet. But first you must prove your worth. So there's a bit of training involved. It does look <laughs> it does look decent. Um it won't be my kind of game. Um not really into watching settings and stuff like that. Um Probably a little bit slow for my liking, but you know, it's uh, I have, to be honest, I don't really any intention of playing it anyway, it's merely for my collection, and that's Space Shuttle Simulator. Next is this is definitely a re release and it's a fantastic game, um, it's a sequel, and I'm sure everyone will have heard of it, and it's Beachhead 2. Beachhead 1, really good game, Beachhead 2 probably slightly improves on the on the original. The continuing saga pits allied forces against the cruel dictator who escapes the destruction of the fortress with portions of his army and prisoners captured during the land battle. A true head-to-head -head two player game with voice simulation and superb multi-screen graphics. I suppose in a way there are, there are a series of uh, mini games um, where I think on one section you're at the bottom of the screen and you're uh, controlling the gun and you have to shoot the enemies coming down, they hide behind walls and, and they have to come through gaps in the walls and come down to attack you. But yeah, Beachhead 2 were a really good game and it needs time. Like I said, they were over £10, I can't remember exactly. Oh, well, this might be something like twelve ninety nine or something like that. Yeah, that's Beachhead Two. And then lastly, um, 
I believe this was from the guy that I mentioned that was selling the, the, the more rarer titles. And this one, I think I paid £15 for this. It was one of the cheapest items that, that he was selling. It's Legend of the Nooker Hole. <laughs> Legend of the Nooker Hole, starring Jet Boot Jack. Let's read the description. Join Jet Boot Jack in his quest down the Nooker Hole to kill the marauding dragon and rescue the king's only daughter. Legend of the Nooker Hole is based on a real South of England legend and features multiple screen action with both vertical and horizontal fine scrolling gameplay, one joystick required. Uh, it's a platforming game starring Jet Boot Jack. <laughs> Love that. But yeah, that's the last of the many I can't even open. Uh, that's the last of the American software games for the Commodore 64. In fact, that's it for the Commodore 64. And now moving on to PS3. Can't remember where I got these from. Honestly, God, I can't. Charity shop, maybe. Cast generators. It might have been cast generators. Anyway, the first one is a Capcom game and it's Dark Void. Step into the void. A sinister parallel world of hostile aliens, powerful weapons and deep mystery. Fly anywhere, fight everywhere, rise up. Um, it's a combination of jetpack powered dogfighting and ground based combat. So, I've never heard of it, I've never played it. Uh, but that is Dark Void by Capcom for the PS3. Next for the PS3 is Terminator Salvation. The end begins. The resistance needs your help. You are John Connor, a soldier in the post-apocalyptic world, and it's up to you to lead your squad of loyal fighters in a desperate battle for survival against the superior forces of Skynet and its deadly Terminators. So this was released by Evolved Games. Never heard of it. And I'm not sure if it's a uh, first person shooter. Again, it's another game I've never played. Um, well, I do believe I've got some a couple of other Terminator games. Is that on the PS2? Well, can't remember. But yeah, this is for the PS3 Terminator Salvation. I picked up one PS4 game. And that is Homefront The Revolution. Philadelphia 2029, America is on its knees. Lead the resistance and wage guerrilla warfare against a superior military force as you fight to reclaim your city and ignite the revolution. Possibly a first person shooter. I do like the first person shooters, but I must admit I'm quite picky. Um, I've got to be. They've got to capture me straight away. The only ones really that have done that are the World War II games from the Medal of Honor series and the uh, Call of Duty World War II and World War. Anyway, <laughs> can't remember. But there is, there is two on the a Call of Duty World War II on the PS4. There's one on PS3, I think. But yeah, they, they, they grab me straight away. And Call of Duty Modern Warfare on the PS4, which is what I'm playing at the minute online. Uh, my particular favourite at the moment is in the Warzone uh, category, uh, playing Plunder. I've had a go with Battle Royale, which is it's like the Fortnite kind of thing where the, the, the edges close in on you. I'm not a big fan of that. I've only had a couple of goes on it and it panics me <laughs> when, it, when it starts to close in I start panicking like oh shit I don't like that I like plunder um, it's quite relaxed uh, you, you can play in different ways you can I like to sometimes I like to control uh, walk around the perimeter of the map there's hardly anybody there everybody's in the middle in cities fighting so I just plunder all the money and that suits me and then when I fancy it 
I'll parachute into the middle and have a bit of gun action. But yeah, this is um, this is home from the revolution. I know I keep saying I really should should try more games. I just seem to be I seem to be just like blinkered with certain games. Yeah, I like that game, so I'll stick to it. I've got loads loads of games I need to play, and I just need to sort myself out. And I thought that actually in this this time that we're in with this damn thing, um, I'd have loads of time to do it. However, I'm not. I'm still working, and. That don't look like it's going to change at all, unless I come down with the virus. Um, home front, the revolution. That's by Dan Buster Studios and Deep Silver. So two PlayStation Two pickups. This one was off eBay, and again, I'm 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 sorting my way through the uh, alphabet, if you like. I'm still on the the symbols and numbers I've still got dot hack quarantine to get and 10,000 bullets and I believe that is the that is the symbols and numbers complete because I did pick up one title and there's a bit of controversy here and I'll, I'll explain to you in a second but the the title is the wall seven agent under fire now, you could look at that and say, yeah, 007, Agent Under Fire. So that comes under numbers. Now, Eddie did give me a list, a full PS2 list. And this game comes under the numerics, 007, Agent Under Fire. However, look on the spine. Yeah, that's J. That's not numerics. That is J. All you people who alphabetise and you're unsure, well I'm going to correct you and I'm going to put the record straight. You go by the spine. That is it. That's the rules. Nobody displays the games like that. They don't. The last gamer does, but he's, he's an exception. <laughs> We, all, I'm sure all of us, we display his games by the spine. We say it's, it's safe space. S I can't even say it. It's space saving. And that is what you go off. You go off the spine. I think in the last podcast, uh, Gurney, Retro Bear and Nath Retro One, I think they were discussing it. And that's, that's the rules. You go from the spine. There's no ifs, no buts, people. That's the rules. And this is J, it's James Bond, 007. So, <laughs> in this list that Eddie gave me, obviously, it comes under 007, which is in the new medic section. Obviously, I thought, well, I need to get that, I haven't got it. I checked under J, I didn't have it. This will help, well, it has helped to complete in the, the new medics and symbols part of the list. So, like I said, there's 10,000 bullets and there is, what did I say, dot act, dot act quality um, to get, and then I'm on to A, and that's when I start moving down A. James Bond 007, Agent Under Fire, PS2 by MGM Interactive, oh, sorry, e EA Games. Never been a massive fan of James Bond. If anything, I preferred the older. Older James Bonds, Sean Connery, Roger Moore, the newer ones, no interest whatsoever. No, no. Uh, this one, this next one was a charity shop pickup and really nice condition. And it's The Sims 2. A new way to play with life. Create your Sims, direct control, directly control every move. Design dream, dream homes, more than 350 objects. I've had a little dabble with The Sims in the past. It's all right. Not really. Uh, I'm not particularly bothered about The Sims, though I do like city building games, and I've got two. Well, I've got a few on the iPad which I play on the night. Um, Pleasure Island. Sorry, Pleasure Island. 
Paradise Island and Paradise Island 2. They're the really two games that I, that I play on. But yeah, that's my EA. A lad at work, he just keeps bringing me stuff every so often. And he's like, oh, Sean, I've got something else for you. Well, what have you got now? Uh, it's a remote control. Right, right. So I produced it. Remote control, mate. It says, it's got PS3. It's all right. Nice one. And that's, that's all it is. It's just a plain looking remote control. But it's for the PS3 and as you can see, it's got the um, the action buttons there. That is the only way you would know, that I would know, that it's remotely, <laughs> no pun intended, uh, related to uh, the PlayStation 3. Uh, all of these, L1, L2, L1, R1, R2. L3, R3, but the rest of it is just like a normal remote control. There's no branding on it though, that I'm surprised about. It's just got Bluetooth underneath, underneath the keys. But there's nothing to, no, no Sony branding or, or anything. I'm assuming it's a third party controller, third party remote control. But I don't know anything about it. I don't even know if it works yet, I haven't even tested it. But yeah, I mean, it, it just keeps bringing me stuff every so often. It's like, oh, I've got this for you, oh, I've got that for you, oh, cheers. So, next, I, um, the other week, I made a trip down to Peak Fighter Tools house, and I gave him a couple of bits. I got a couple of bits back off him. I got, uh, I had a working SNES, he had a, a faulty SNES, and we did, basically did a swap, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and repair it. So, and I might even retro bright it in the summer. I have retro brighted once, but it was only something small. Uh, worked a treat. But I've never done anything like a console. And he also gave me, because I mentioned to, to, to the guys that, as well as games and, and, you know, obviously the consoles, I am actually collecting all the different model numbers of PlayStation 1. Not so much PS2 yet, but at the moment I'm concentrating on PlayStation 1. And I probably have got the full set in, in various boxes and, and spares and stuff like that. Um, but I thought, well, I've got the idea of opportunity, I'm going to find all the model numbers, clean them up, and then somehow I'll display them in my, in my lockup. Um, even though they all look the same. But what he had for me was this. Yeah, it's just a PlayStation, but it's a model number 5502. I can't remember exactly how many models I did. Um, we started with the 1002 series, didn't we? That was the audio file. 5002 is a 5502, and then there's a triple 502. It's a 9002-7002. Anyway, it's all different revisions. And yeah, as, as geeky as it is, that's what I want to do. I want to be able to have one console for every model number. I stripped it down, cleaned all the insides out, give the outside a, a good a good clean. There were a few black uh, ink marks on, on the front and back marker pen possibly but they came off relatively easy for marker pen so I don't know what it was but yeah uh, works a treat um, and looks looks fantastic first one that I'm actually going to officially say is in my collection and this is a 5502 5502 model PlayStation 1 so very much appreciated for that Pete it's a, it's a lovely example, is that? Thank you. And then lastly, uh, like I said at the beginning, Eddie, this is the last pickup I bought uh, recently. Eddie uh, linked it uh, on WhatsApp and said, look at this, bought this for your collection. And yeah, I mean, it was $12.99, to me anyway, I don't know if, uh, how much they normally go for but it, it seemed a bargain to me and it's 
it's Crash Bandicoot and it's the Skylanders Imaginators and this one is Crash and Neo Cortex and that is just fantastic it's brand new it's not used or anything brand new and that will go nicely with my Crash collection I don't know if there's any more for this series no that though those on the back aren't, aren't Crash related don't think no not think they are yeah that's uh, that's over there this is the Thumping Humper Islands adventure pack Crash Bandicoot and Dr Neo Cortex so that is fantastic I'm really really glad that Eddie pointed that out to me and that is it people that's the last pickups what have I got coming up community news um, next month and then I, I was planning to do some gameplay videos or something like that I just haven't had my head around it lately oh nearly forgetting this I thought my mouth and my throat were getting a bit dry or is that the virus <laughs> quite nice actually I recommend that Al I don't know if you're into your stouts but that's a really nice uh, real nice drink nice nice and flavoursome oh there's the there's the podcast um, I were on the first one the first podcast that we did possibly be on the next next week's um, I've missed two Due to us, we're doing like rotation, and last week I was working, and so I wasn't able to make it. But perhaps might be on the next one. Uh, yeah, that that's that's another project that that we're working on uh, as a group, and that is the the TMB podcast. So yeah, check check them out, have a listen. Basically, it's just it's like being at being at the pub, uh, sat around the table with your mates listening, having a chat and I'll laugh. That's the main thing, we want, we want to have a laugh doing it um, rather than getting all political and serious, but we're not, we're not bothered about that. We, uh, we just want to discuss games and, and have fun doing it. So yeah, um, what can I say until next time? It could be, could be what, three months <laughs> before another pickup video, maybe longer. That's how it is at the moment. The world's gone crazy. But anyway, um, please, as, as we're all saying to each other, stay safe, um, look after yourselves. And until next time, see you later.